Welcome back. So we're continuing chapter two for industrial organization here. And last video, we talked about demand and revenue and elasticities. And we saw that firms face this trade-off between increasing price and selling less or decreasing price and selling more. And that there was a point that maximized total revenue. Now, we also said that firms don't maximize total revenue, right? We expect firms to maximize uh, profit. And in order to maximize profit, we need to think about costs, right? Profit is equal to uh, revenue minus costs. And so that's what we're going to uh, introduce here. Um, cost functions are not everybody's absolute favorite piece of economics uh, for some strange reason, um, but they are really important, right? So if we're thinking about firms maximizing revenue, they need, uh, excuse me, maximizing profit, they need to think about both revenue and costs. And as we'll see, what they're going to want to do is to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, or at least some close approximation of that. So total cost is total cost. It's everything you spend to make your product. So that's fixed costs plus variable costs. Uh, fixed costs are everything that you need to spend that don't relate to how much you produce, right? So, you know, you can think about it as, you know, the salaries for the executives, um, maybe, you know, the, the, just the factory cost, right? You can't, produce any, every, anything if you don't have a factory or the storefront costs, whereas variable costs uh, have to do with how much you produce. So they're going to increase uh, with um, quantity. So as we can see, um, we can think about two sort of pieces. One is average cost, which is just total cost divided by quantity. And the other is marginal cost. Remember, marginal is that cost of producing one more unit. Um, and so we can graph, you know, a lot of different types of cost functions. A lot of times for sort of simplicity sake, we're going to assume that there's no fixed costs and just a, you know, uh, linear um, or fixed marginal cost. Um, a sort of more realistic view probably is that average cost is decreasing at first because of those fixed costs and then it starts to increase. Um, which means that marginal costs are going to tend to be increasing at least over the place that we are interested in in producing. One thing to note is that marginal cost always intersects the average cost at the minimum, right? That's I always explain it in my classes, right? If you're if your last uh, exam grade is below your average, that brings your average down. So that's what's going on here. And then if your marginal exam grade, your last exam grade is higher than your average, that's going to bring your average up. And so that's what's happening over here. And so where they cross is always going to be at the average cost minimum. We can have lots of sort of funky um, marginal and average cost curves. Um, you know, here the sort of marginal and average costs are the same between X and Y. Um, and that's sort of our minimum efficient um, scale here at X, right? Um, but maybe the costs are basically the same until we get to Y, and then we have to build a new factory or something. We have to buy a new machine. Um, and so then they start to go up. And so in the real world, of course, you're not going to have smooth average costs and marginal cost curves um, because you're going to have to say, okay, well, I, I have to you know, open a new factory. I have to buy new storefronts. I have to buy new trucks. Um, so it'll be lumpy, but you know, the math works out easier if everything's nice and smooth. <laughs> uh, all right. So what we're going to talk a lot about efficiency and, and when I think efficiency, right, I think that there's no waste. And so for a firm, that means you're producing at your lowest possible cost. Um, for, you know, in terms of average cost and marginal cost, that means that you are producing at your lowest average cost, right? When we know that the lowest average cost is where that marginal cost intersects it. Um, We'll talk about when that's going to be true and when it's not going to be true, right? One of the findings is that, you know, for certain assumptions around perfect competition, uh, firms will be economically efficient. Um, we often find that firms experience economies of scale, at least when they are sort of starting out and producing more quantities, right? So they might have high fixed costs like factories or stores or trucks or whatever. Um, specialization might benefit them and they probably learn, right? They learn how to be more efficient. And so in that case, their average cost will be falling 
um, and they'll be experiencing economies of scale, at least up to a certain point. And after that point, we expect average costs to increase, right? So once you've done all the, you know, you don't have those high fixed costs anymore, you do, but you've sort of gotten as much as you can out of them. Um, you've learned as much as you can, you've benefited from specialization enough, uh, then we expect average costs to increase. That might be due to organizational difficulties or supply difficulties or, or any number of things. Um, although, you know, some of those things might be decreasing due to the information age. So one of Walmart's main advantages that allowed them to grow much bigger than other firms was uh, their use of, uh, you know, using information technology to manage their supply chains super efficiently. Um, and that allowed them to be bigger than stores could in the past. So, I, you know, all right, here's, here's an average cost curve um, where alpha is representing technology. So technology just means that we can do things, um, you know, better. We can take more, uh, we can take the inputs and get more output. Um, Remember that average cost always equals marginal cost at the minimum. In this case, um, I'm not too worried about the, the actual uh, formulas here. Um, in fact, they have the same minimum, um, so that doesn't really matter, right? They would still be more uh, most efficient here, where Q equals 10 and, and cost equals 10. The key here is that costs are lower, average cost is lower for... Um, AC2 rather than AC1 and so we could say that that represents at least over most of the production function uh, an improvement in technology that decreases average costs and and so if you're a firm you want to think about okay well I can spend my research and development dollars either in you know making amazing new products or I can spend it in trying to figure out ways to reduce my costs um, both are going to potentially increase my profits, and so I want to spend my money uh, in the area that's going to increase my profits the most. Um, so, we, as I said, we're going to kind of cheat a lot and say that we just have a constant marginal cost equal to C. Uh, makes the math a lot easier. What does that mean? It means we don't have any fixed costs, and so our total cost uh, just starts here at the origin at zero. We could adjust that, and in fact, it's not going to matter that much because fixed costs are going to disappear when we differentiate our, uh, our profit function, right? They're going to be important for the level of profit, but not for the amount that we produce uh, in most cases. And so it's okay sort of to ignore that. Um, the linear sort of constant marginal cost where we just have some cost C where every unit um, costs C, that might be reasonable for more mature firms. Um, we'll talk about that as we go along, but it does make the math a lot easier. And so here, our average cost and our marginal costs are just the same, and they're just both equal to C, and the slope of our total cost is just equal to C. There are lots of other costs that we can talk about, right? We can talk about quasi-fixed costs, which might be setup costs. Um, we might just call them F. Some costs are, are different than fixed costs, right? Some costs are costs that you've already made that can't be recovered. Um, so like a factory you can sell, right? You might not be able to sell it for as much as you bought it for, but it's something that you can sell. Um, all the time that you spent developing your product, you might not be able to recoup in any way, right? And so they're just sunk costs and they shouldn't factor in to you know, the profit decision, right? They've already been paid, they can't be got, uh, they can't be recovered, and so we should just ignore them. Um, economies of scope tend to have to do, so economies of scale are about how much we produce, right? So if we have economies of scale, then our costs are going down as we produce more. If we have diseconomies of scale, then our costs are going up as we produce more. Economies of scope are about producing different things. Um, and so, you know, the, Classic examples in most textbooks are like, um, you know, producing particle board when you're producing wood products because you produce all this sawdust that can be made into particle board, or producing natural gas and oil because when you drill for one, you often find the other. Um, so those are things that are cheaper to produce together rather than separately, and so firms uh, often want to think about that uh, as well because that can reduce total costs uh, rather than having two firms 
produce each good, now you can have one firm produce both goods at a lower cost. All right, so we'll stop there um, and finish up sort of chapter two, thinking about firms in a slightly more realistic um, way and what do they actually do? Do they actually maximize profit? Um, what does that mean? Do they maximize this year's profit versus longer run profit, etc.? So we'll talk about that more as we finish up chapter two in the next video.